students of NUS, we are Hui Ting, Yi Ning and Jasmine, a group of students who created the blog Le Gong Dialect Ma. In English, it means, can you speak in your dialect? So today, we will share with you the social issue raised in our blog, which is about the ban of non-Mandarin Chinese dialects in mass media and the strong need to reintroduce them back into free-to-air television and radio shows to bridge the widening generation gap. So let's start off by playing a simple game. A show of hands, how many of you are Hokkien's? Yes, okay, so are you able to pronounce toilet paper in Hokkien? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Lin, would you like to try? <laughs> change in the representation of non-Mandarin Chinese dialects in mass media after the Speak Mandarin campaign was launched in 1979. The, ban, the government banned all forms of non-Mandarin Chinese dialects from free-to-air television and radio shows in hope to boost Singaporeans' competency, competency in English and Mandarin. So, according to the Straits Times, 12.2% of residents aged 5 and above communicate in non-Mandarin Chinese dialects at home. This figure has dropped from 14.3% in 2010 and 18.2% in 2005. However, according to a 2010 statistic paper, 64.3% of elderly senior citizens aged 65 and above most frequently use non-Mandarin Chinese dialects to communicate at home. So this figure shows that elderly or senior citizens are more conversant with dialects and they may feel marginalized or alienated if we speak to them in in English or Mandarin because they may not know what we are talking about. <coughs> so this poses a language barrier which will lead to a widening <coughs> generation gap. <coughs> so to bridge this generation gap, we need to educate children and youth non-Mandarin Chinese dialects. According to a research by Princeton University, children can learn from educational media such as television shows. So there is a need to educate youth and children by bringing in educational dialect programs in television shows so that they are able to learn how to speak in simple dialects enough to converse with their grandparents. So there is a need to reintroduce dialect back, non mandarin Chinese dialect back into mass media to bridge this widening generation gap. I'll pass the time to Yi Ning to elaborate more on this point. So during the Speak Mandarin campaign's 35th anniversary, I was actually quite shocked to find out that Prime Minister Li actually stated that mastering dialect is not a very pragmatic approach. He stated that expecting youth to master English, Mandarin, and on top of that, dialect at the same time will be a very tremendous challenge for youth, and this will actually affect their proficiency in English and Mandarin. He also added that this in the future will be a huge price to pay and adds burden to a child. <coughs> So he felt that the current dialect ban is actually justified. Okay. However, it actually sends a wrong message to the younger generation. We should not just be standing still. Imagine if we do nothing about it, the situation would just become very much more dire. It is better to inculcate a good awareness of dialect before it's too late and we stray further away from our grandparents. Learning just simple conversational phrases of dialect will already be a big step and a major starting to support my point, research done by Lucas Onis, who is a linguist professor at Nanyang Technological University, found that dialect actually has little to no effect on English and Mandarin competencies for use. All the more, we should reintroduce dialect back to mainstream media to increase exposure and familiarity amongst the use of dialects. So how do we do so? 
Let us first abolish the dialect ban on TV productions and let dialect be spoken as it is. Currently, producers usually engage in dubbing on TV programs if dialect is used. So we should just do away with this whole dubbing idea and let and include subtitles along the dialects to include to aid understanding amongst the use of dialect. We can also create more productions that highlight the dialect culture, show appreciation for it, and reinforce its role and place in society. In such productions, the focus should definitely be youth-centered. Because youth frequent TV, frequent YouTube, and we want to make dialect education more relevant, we want to invite popular YouTube stars such as Xia Xue, Night Hour Cinematics, or Wa Banana. I'm sure you've heard of all of them before. Imagine if you can see these stars acting in your dialect education TV shows. You will definitely turn on the TV just to get, catch a glimpse of them. So this, not, this piques the youth's interest and would encourage them to tune in to the dialect education TV shows. You may ask, since we are focusing so much on youth and we want to make it so youth-centered, why are we doing it on TV shows and not just with you? We want to make dialect education an entire family activity. We want to encourage intergenerational bonding. We want the kids to be able to converse with their grandparents about the characters in the show or clarify certain phrases that they are unsure of. Thus, uh, TV shows is the best platform for us to do so. We will also want to incorporate older generation hosts for our grandparents to relate to as well. So there's definitely a need to reintroduce non-Mandarin Chinese dialects back to mainstream media. Now I'll pass the time on to Jasmine to explain more. Okay, so I'll ask and answer one very important question that I know all of you are thinking about. Why should I care? Why should I care that this ban affects me? Or does it even affect me? I know what you're thinking about. I'm a university student. I don't even have the time to watch television shows. I want to listen to Angmoh songs. I don't listen to Hokkien songs and I don't care for Cantonese songs either. So why should I care to help reintroduce dialects back into Singapore's media? So these three are some of the negative impacts that will directly or indirectly affect you and your family. There is loss of languages and cultures. So you must understand that it's not just about dialects disappearing in Singapore. Dialects are a big part of Singlish. So does this mean that our national identity will also somehow be affected? And then there's the generation gap, which leads to the marginalization of the elderly at 16 by 15. We all have families, right? So what are the most important things in the family? It's communication and there's understanding. <laughs> okay, so if there's a generation in our family that feels isolated because of language barriers, then does this not mean that our mother tongues and English are not sufficient enough to help us create functional family units, right? So this band does affect you and you should care. There have been a lot of initiatives trying to bring back dialects into Singapore's media, but we don't want to be patronized by very temporary changes. We need something more permanent. Okay, two to three years ago, there was a petition to bring back Chinese dialect media into Singapore's Chinese dialect into Singapore media. It obviously failed because only 258 people joined the petition, and the target is only 500 people. So it failed. Why did it fail? Because this issue is not one issue that is very highly publicized. And you can do something to help spread awareness. Fast forward to this year, there is a new Hokkien drama currently airing on Channel 8. It's called The Park Way, which means a uh, happy turn. Yeah. In Chinese, it's Si Tao Ma. Okay, so this teaches government policies to the elderly. So even the government recognizes that the most convenient and efficient way to communicate with the elderly is through dialects. But of course, this is a government strategy to market their policies to the elderly, and it's not a permanent use of dialects in Singapore's media. It's at every Friday at 12 p.m. All the children are in school, all the adults are at work. So, and there will probably not be another dialect drama after this drama ends, especially not one that will be uh, focused towards the general public. So, how can you help? You are a tech savvy university student. You can help to spread awareness through social media. You can reopen or join petitions, and you can even write in to the MDA. The most important thing for you is to understand that you are implicated, and you should do something to make a change. So why not start off by 
by reading our blog. This is a screenshot of our blog where we uh, talk more about the negative impact of the censorship.